Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Science Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. Thank you for joining me. So, this is the part five of gastrointestinal secretion. Okay? So, now we are focusing on intestinal secretion. This is part five. We dealt with salivary secretion, gastric secretion, pancreatic secretion, biliary secretion. Now, intestinal. This is very, very easy. Very easy stuff. There's nothing complex to think about here. Okay? So, intestinal secretion, small intestinal secretion, large intestinal secretion. What and what do they secrete? Like we have said all this while, that mainly all these secretions they contain, apart from by biliary secretion that doesn't contain enzyme, all other secretions, you have water, you have electrolytes, and enzymes mainly. Then also they have, they can have mucus. Some of them usually have secret mucus in addition. Okay. The mucus is, is not so much there. These are main things you always don't forget to mention. So the same thing in the intestinal secretions, just that they play a minor role, especially as it has to do with enzymatic secretion. We'll talk about the enzymes. Now, let's start from the intestinal secretions. Usually, these secretions are from glands, like we have always mentioned. So, in the intestine, there are the duodenum especially, the duodenum, it has a special gland called the Bruna, Bruna glands. Okay, then you also have the crypts of live bacon. You usually like to put two dots here. Live bacon, okay? So, these Bruna glands, what do they do? Simple, mainly mucus. It secretes mucus, which helps, as we know, mucus is thick and slimy. They help to coat the mucosa to prevent any corrosive action from acid. That's why it is located at the duodenum, because the duodenum is the part that is immediately exposed, okay, immediately exposed to gastric acid. So that's why you have a special gland dedicated to mucus secretion there. Okay, in the intestine. Then the crypts of Libacum, they just talk about they are usually located, they are like they are pits, crypts. They are pits. That's what crypt mean. So they are pits in the mucosa. So they have cells, the cells in those pits, they secrete a lot of water and electrolytes. Okay, so that's mainly what they secret. Remember that we said that about 10 liters of fluid is absorbed in the intestine. Then the large intestine, about 600 mils. So when you calculate that, you see that you take in just about, let's say for those who take in a lot of water, three liters a day. So up to seven liters or more are from the secretion, salivary secretion, one point something liter, Gastric secretion at one point, they're all 1.5 to 2, like that, depending on how hydrated you are and the amount of stimulation. So, when you calculate all of them, you see that they amount to up to 7 liters. The same thing. So, this amount of up to 1.8 liters of this water and electrolyte secretion. Okay? So, this crypts of labor could they secrete this. Then, they also in the small intestine, there are two cells there around this crypt of Libacum. You have goblet 
you have goblet cells. Okay, apart from this brunal gland I've mentioned, these goblet cells they also secrete mucus in other parts of the intestine. Then you now have enterocytes, which are very abundant, the most abundant cells of the intestine. That's where entero means intestine. Okay, so cells of the intestine, that's what it means. So the enterocytes around these crypts of libacum, okay, they secrete this, they are the ones that secrete this water and electrolytes. Why the enterocytes in the villi, you remember that the small intestine has villi, unlike the large intestine. So the enterocytes here, the enterocytes in the crypt of libacum, they are the ones that secrete this water. Then the enterocytes in the villi, that's the microvilli, those enterocytes, what they secrete are enzymes. And we call them brush border enzymes. Remember that during when we were learning about the structure, we said that microvilli is also known as brush border. So we call them brush border enzymes. So what they secrete mainly is enzymes. So I want it to stick in your brain, okay? These cells around the crypts, crypt of libacum, and then the villi. Like two kinds of cells. Goblet cells secrete mucus, then the enterocytes they secrete water and electrolytes in the crypts. Then when they now go to the villi, those enterocytes, they secrete enzymes. And the enterocytes also absorb water and products of digestion. You see how they are different. The enterocytes of these crypts, they secrete water and electrolytes. Enterocytes of the villi, they reabsorb water and electrolytes plus products of digestion. But another important thing is that they have enzymes that digest. So the kind of enzymes they have, hmm, the, that's the final point of digestion happen at these enterocytes. Very powerful enzymes. Those enzymes are usually peptidases. You no, know, when protein digestion has occurred, all those proteolytic enzymes of pancreas and all other parts, upper parts of the um, GIT. Sometimes they don't break it to amino acids. They can stop at peptides. Peptides, okay? Then carbohydrates, they can, sometimes they can stop at disaccharide level, but we need them to become monosaccharide. So you have disaccharides still remaining disaccharides okay so what you those brush brother enzymes just remove this s here they are known as disaccharidesis and peptides peptidases from its aes so those are the kinds of enzymes that are located at this brush brother they now break it down to the smallest absorbable level okay so that's what you have. So in the large intestine, this, we are focused more on this. So in the large intestine, no much difference. The difference is that the script of libacum that has these cells, but without microvilli. The large intestine does not have microvilli, okay? So there are no enzymes. It doesn't secrete any enzyme to do any form of digestion. Okay, so the large intestine, they secrete a lot of mucus also from the goblet cells. Okay, it's a lot of mucus. And they also reabsorb the enterocytes, other enterocytes, they reabsorb the same water and electrolytes. So that is what happens in the intestinal secretion. It's very straightforward. Okay. So we're going to deal with the regulation of intestinal secretion after this break. Right, welcome back. 
So let's talk about the regulation. Also very straightforward. It's not difficult to understand. Now, what helps mailing the regulation is when tactile stimuli, tactile, tactile simply means touch. So when food or fecal matter, okay, chime or fecal matter in the case of large intestine, when it touch the mucosa, it stimulates secretion. Okay, so it's both nervous mechanism, hormonal mechanism, and of course you know that the parasympathetic does it favors everything that has to do with the functions of the GI, the GIT, motility function, secretory function, absorption, all everything. Okay, so the vagus stimulation for the upper part, then the lower part also the pelvic nerves. So just say parasympathetic stimulation favors that, okay, stimulates. Then also for the nervous, mainly this hormone, secretin, okay, secretin favors the secretion from the name, secretin favors the secretion. Then for this um, nervous mechanism, the sympathetic inhibits it, right? So it's just simple very simple stuff but this is what how it is regulated okay so just go over it it's very simple to understand the different parts especially what might confuse you this enterocytes what they do because the enterocytes from this crypts of libacon does something different from the enterocytes around the microvilla in the case of the small intestine Okay, so enterocytes they secrete water and electrolytes in these crypts. Then when they enter the microvilli, they don't do secretion. What they now do is absorption and then secretion of enzymes. Okay, they now absorb what this one has secreted and also secretes enzymes that cyclodesis, peptidases, and all that that help in final digestion. So that is what you need to know about intestinal secretion. So we, this is the conclusion. So the next major thing about gastrointestinal function, it's now digestion and absorption, all right? So for further reading, I've written a book on GIT physiology. This is it here. Gastrointestinal physiology broken down for you. And all the books in physiology, seven of them, as at the time of this shooting. So just check the link below. You'll see those different books. You can click it and download it, the soft copy for a little token at a Kada Books. Okay. Also check the description. You'll see our website, the link there. Click it and check out our website. Visit us and you get to see some other things we do to make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. So see you in the next video.